So if we look at our diagram here at the bottom right, we see that the heating spring is 3 to 6 pounds, and the cooling occurs between 9 and 13 pounds. If we had a standard thermostat, the branch output would occur in a linear fashion. And when we apply that thought to the diagram, the only time both valves are closed is when the output is either 7 or 8 PSI, which represents, in practice, between 2 and 4 degrees at the end user um, location. With this dead band thermostat, after the valve is closed, the heating valve is closed, the thermostat will hesitate and continue to output the 8 PSI until the ambient temperature rises to the set point of the cooling dial. This will cause an exaggerated dead band. In the above example, the ambient temperature would need to fall down below 65 degrees for the heating to start and rise above 78 degrees before the cooling would start. Next. These are a picture of just several types of thermostats sitting on the wall. It gives you a chance to sort of see how they would look on the wall even before you get the cover off so you can sort of spot the differences between a single and dual thermostat and a dual with manual index switching. Um, I think this is very important that you sort of spot what you're coming into uh, when you first walk into the room. Wes, your comments. Well, also important would be after you took the cover off what you see. But simply looking at these units uh, with the cover off, we would start to recognize uh, based upon what we discussed already, what we're looking at. The unit up on top, we would typically see a single bimetal, which means that really accomplishes just a single purpose. The second unit, we would take the cover off and typically see two bimetals. Typically, we would see the bimetals being different and opposite actions. Normally, that's direct acting for heating and reverse acting for cooling. Uh, so that would represent a heat cool or winter summer thermostat. And the third picture adds another element. Uh, again, we would have two bimetals. In this case, however, they'd both be of the same action, but you see the addition of the override button. So that thermostat would typically be applied to a day-night uh, application. Next. Next, we're going to cover a couple of other types of thermostats you may come across. What you're seeing in front of you is one of the more unique products. The picture shows some typical valve-type thermostats available from several manufacturers. By remote, the valve unit has either a bulb or averaging element as the th thermometer temperature input. Uh, the T3111 and the T3311 have the equivalent of both a V3000 uh, pneumatic valve actuator built into the unit as well as a thermostat and can be directly mounted on all valves that accept of the E3000 actuator. Uh, the T3610 device is used primarily as a low temperature freeze protection in unit vents and looks very similar to this. Um, this unit, uh, you don't see a lot of these, but it's kind of unique and you cannot just replace this with a standard thermostat. You'd have to have a, both a thermostat and a valve actuator. Uh, Wes, your comments? So indeed, the picture shown is an uh, extremely unique device in that it does have an integral set point represented in the dial up at the top of that unit, as well as a valve actuator built into it. Now, since this thermostat is typically located inside of an enclosure, which is the same enclosure that houses the water coil, it would normally be influenced by the ambient temperature around the unit inside of that enclosure. So they add a capillary remote bulb. And this takes the place of the bimetal that you would normally see in a thermostat. That bulb is then located down near the floor where the room temperature kind of is drawn back into this um, enclosure. And you can properly sense the room temperature. This unit would require only one airline from the main air supply. Next. Next. Uh, this is a similar thermostat, but now this does not include the valve actuator. It's again something that has the integral uh, set point and the capillary with remote bulb. This is used in applications where you want to measure something that's difficult to get to with a thermostat and be able to adjust it but you still want to have that be able to function. So we have both a T3100 series 
single pressure, single temperature, as well as a T3300 dual pressure, dual temperature, and then a T3610 used again to sort of protect as a low limit thermostat on different ducts and unit vents. Wes? Uh, these thermostats, like the previous slide, are remote bulb thermostats. They're typically located inside of an enclosure. However, unlike the previous slide, it's not capable of directly operating a valve. Therefore, this would require two airlines, not one airline. You'd have one main air supply and then a branch line out to the valve. Next. Finally, just a, a few other thermostats that you may come across. There's the T8000 series of remote element thermostats uh, bulbs available with both B bulb and averaging elements available with both two position control as well as proportional control. Um, these are the ones that you see towards the left there with the capillaries. And then we also have these T8020 series of immersion thermostats that can be mounted directly to a well. You'll see that on the right where there's a straight element coming out the back. There will be a threaded connection. You screw that right into a well and it monitors the pipe, the temperature in the fluid in the pipe. And again, these are two tube devices. It has both a supply and an output pressure. Wes? Again, uh, these thermostats really represent what's considered a remote bulb uh, thermostat. But note, in addition, what you get here is a gauge that's permanently installed on the unit. The gauge is going to indicate to you what the branch line pressure out to the final control device is just by looking right at this thermostat. Next. Next, we're going to cover transmitters and receiver controllers. These are the partners in control. You can't have one without the other. And we'll start with the pneumatic transmitters. Transmitters have to send their signal somewhere, and that places a receiver controller. At the receiver control, all the necessary adjustments are made, and the output signal is sent along to the control devices, such as a valve and damper actuator. This diagram is a very simplified um, schematic of a simple receiver controller and a transmitter controlling a valve to a heating coil. Wes? The transmitter, as represented in the picture, requires restricted main air be fed to it. The air line between the controller and the transmitter can be up to 50 feet away. So in the picture you see there, you see the receiver controller in the pink square. You see the transmitter in dark gray. The small stub of air line represents the distance between the control and the transmitter. So just as that picture is written there, that can be up to 50 feet away. Transmitters will bleed off excess main air, resulting in a pressure reading between 3 and 15 pounds. The actual pressure read between 3 and 15 represents the specific temperature somewhere between what the sensor is capable of reading. Sensor spans, which is the high and low of what the temperature uh, read at the thermostat can be, can be up to, in temperature, up to 200 degrees. So transmitters can actually read humidity. They can read pressure as well as temperature. Again, the restrictor represented by the circle and the X is shown connected within the controller. You can extend the distance allowed between the receiver controller and the transmitter up to 1,000 feet. And the way that's done is by blocking the internal restrictor and installing a remote restrictor and then following the instructions on the receiver controller on how to uh, correctly pipe that. So the transmitter can be located further away than the normal 50 feet by adjustment of the uh, internal versus uh, external restrictor. Next. Uh, here's a simple graph that says it all. As we've stated, transmitters are really nothing more than sensors. They provide the same output signal of 3 to 15 PSI over the range of the transmitter, no matter what range is selected, no matter whether the sensing medium is pressure, temperature, or humidity. For the most part, pneumatic transmitters do not have a pilot bleed relay that boosts the volume of output air. Transmitters do not directly do drive any control devices, so they don't need to deliver a high volume of air. They are low-volume devices and send their signals directly to the receiver controller. Wes? 